All right, let's look at this problem from beginning to end. Let's say the percentage of U.S. students who get their worst grade senior year is 31%. I pick 200 random students. Describe the sampling distribution. In other words, describe the possible results I might get from taking this sample. Well, thanks to what we just learned, we can find the average result. Um, the average result, uh, when I try to estimate what percentage actually are, you know, do have their worst grades senior year, on average I will get, uh, I will get it right. Of course I will probably miss, but my average guess of the proportion will be right on. It will be 31%. And I will typically miss that by, uh, by 0 0.0 Zero, no, zero, three, two, seven, as we discovered in that last thing, using the formulas um, from the formula sheet, or from this chapter, the average guess of the proportion is the actual proportion, and your typical amount of missing the true proportion by will be, you know, formula P, 1 minus P over N. Okay, so, but now describe, so we can describe the, when you were describing distributions in chapter one, you would describe center, shape, spread, outliers. Um, and outliers was the last of those. So, um, so really the top three, center, shape, and spread. Um, well, we know the average result will be 31%. This is the center of all possible results. On average, you will get 31% of them, just like the actual truth. The shape, well, we can do the spread. The spread, we typically miss that by about 3.3%. So, um, so now we have some idea of how much we're missing the truth by. Uh, but shape, well, what sort of distribution is this? This is a binomial distribution, right? Um, it's, uh, the binomial distribution is a situation where uh, the percent chance of success is the same each time, which it is, 31%, because I'm taking a random sample of 200 students. Uh, binary, yes, either they had worse things in your year or they didn't. Independent, I said they were random students, so they're not like they're all from the same high school. The number's been selected ahead of time, there are 200 of them, and the probability of success was the same each time, 31%. So it is a binomial situation. So what is the shape of a binomial distribution? Well, it could be skewed, but is it? Well, if the sample is large enough, it's, all, it's normal, right? We discovered that at the end of chapter 6 that if the binomial distribution sample is big enough, and this is a pretty big sample, then the distribution is shaped normally. So what was necessary? Well, first of all, you have to get 10 successes and 10 failures. In this case, it's do we expect 10 successes and 10 failures? Well, we expect 31% of them to be successes. They have their worst grade senior year. That would be 62 of them. And we expect the other 138 to, uh, to be, you know, to not. And both of those are more than 10. So let me make this point. Um, 200, uh, what are the conditions necessary to make sure that this can be distributed normally, that it really is, uh, that it really satisfies all the conditions here, and also is no the sample size large enough to be normal? Well, sample size large enough to be normal, we expect 10 successes. If you take the number in your sample, 200, you multiply by 31%, you expect those 62 students, well, that if, if you expect more than 10 people to, yes, have their worst grades senior year, and expect more than 10 people to no, not have their worst grade senior year, if both those are more than 10, and they are, and, well, are these people independent? Um, might we not run out of high schoolers who have their worst grades? Senior year. 
Um, well, if we pick 200 random students, do we start running out of students? Well, that depends how many students are there. If the number in your sample is, uh, is more, it is less than 10% of the whole population, then they're independent. This we discussed, I think, in chapter five. What do we, you know, how long before the number of students that we take is too much to maintain independence? Don't we run out of, like, you know, with the green socks in the drawer and the black socks in the drawer, if we keep picking green socks, don't we run out of green socks? Don't we run out of spades in a deck of cards? Well, as long as you have picked less than 10% of the whole population, uh, the people are considered independent. So basically, these are the three conditions you're going to check uh, before you can describe the shape of the distribution. Uh, you will say, first of all, um, are those students really independent of each other? Well, have we picked less than 10% of the whole population? Well, I figure there's more than 2,000 students in the U.S., so yep, that is taken care of. There will be a lot of this checking of conditions happening later. Uh, next, do we expect at least, you know, do we expect at least 10 successes that the distribution will be shaped normally, and 10 failures that the distribution will be shaped normally? Well, we expect 31% of those 200, or 62 students, to be, uh, to be, have their worst grades in your year. That is definitely more than 10. And the remainder is 100, yeah, way more than 10. So we can say the center is, the average result will be 31% of our students uh, had their first grade, worst grade senior year. The shape is normally distributed. And the spread, standard deviation, 0 0.0327 is the standard deviation. Um, uh, they won't ask you about outliers, but basically the sampling distribution will not tend to have outliers. <laughs> that would be a weird distribution. Um, yeah, enough said. That is the sort of thing you're going to do. You're going to check the conditions to see if it's normally distributed. And if it is, now we can say a lot about this distribution. Because the problem is, with the binomial distribution, imagine a sample of 200. Think about what that formula would look like uh, when you plug it into the calculator. 200, what is the probability that I will end up with, like, uh, 150 people who have their worst grades, you know, senior year, uh, 150 factorial. Your calculator probably won't be able to handle 200 factorial. Like, that number is just too big. Uh, it will not work. So, yeah, this is just, uh, these are, in situations like this where the numbers are large, we can't use the binomial distribution. But since it's basically normal for large numbers, we'll be able to use the normal distribution instead. And you'll see a lot of that in the upcoming chapter.